Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And Jesus is that light of life. Today is March 18th, 2024, and I am still have a suspension on tube for hate speech. Evidently, uh, quoting the New Testament is hate speech. So, uh, yeah. Right now, I've got two strikes against me, and if I get another one, uh, channel's gone. And I made a deal with the Lord. When my YouTube channel's gone, that's it. I quit uh, social media, socialist media. And just remember, Nikita Khrushchev, the dictator of Soviet Russia, uh, he said that he used to use communism and socialism interchangeably. This is going to be a Bible study on seed or seeds. Um, do you know that seed can be singular or plural? Yes, I have a single seed in my hand. Or I have an entire bag of, well, I have several bags, bags of corn seed, seed corn. It could be singular or it could be plural. Generally, if you have one type of seed, it could be plural. But if you have, let's say, corn wheat, rye, barley, whatever, you know, then you might say, well, I have uh, a variety of seeds, you know, tomato, corn, squash, whatever, you know. But um, we're going to see what the Bible says about seed. Now, I'm going to tell you from the beginning, obviously, seed could be the part of a plant of a fruit that you can grow other plants from and then other times seed refers to children or progeny so keep that in mind and it could be singular or plural keep that in mind and sometimes words have double meanings in the english language so, keep that in mind. Uh, I remember a pun from elementary school. Why did the golfer wear two pairs of pants? Uh, in case he got a hole in one. And ladies, uh, those of you and guys that don't play golf, and I don't really play golf, but... Um, if you hit the ball and it goes into the hole... On the first try, that's called a hole in one. Uh, very few people can do that. It's considered quite an accomplishment in the golf world. Um, but yeah, so obviously the two pairs of pants are for knocking a ball into a hole. And it never ceases to amaze me the um, People that get into sports, you know, throwing or kicking or whatever balls is just unbelievable. You know, I used to like football, uh, but yeah, now I consider it a waste of time. And, uh, you know, during World War II, uh, when they were fishing, let's say a pilot got shot down in the ocean and a U.S. ship was getting ready to pick him up, not knowing if it was uh, an enemy or an American. They would ask him baseball questions because would a Japanese or a German know about baseball? Well, I would have been in trouble because, you know, I, Dizzy Dean, Mickey Mantle, Babe Ruth, I, you know, I've heard the names, but I don't know what their stats were and I could actually care less. Uh, my dad was a, uh, 
drafted by the minors, baseball minors, but he was uh, just about the time he was going to be into playing baseball, the Japanese decided to attack Pearl Harbor and uh, he went into the military, lied about his age like many other people did. Uh, I think he was 16, 17, something like that. And uh, hurt his shoulder in the military and that was the end of his baseball career. Never really happened. So I think it was a, it would have been a waste of time, but you know, you never know. Of course, ball players didn't make then what they're making now, but but I think it's all stupid throwing a ball around. So, but enough of that. Let's talk about seed. Now, one thing I love about the King James Bible, and you'll notice that people that have all these weird ideas about the Bible, they don't use a King James Bible because the King James Bible will explain the King James Bible if you let it. But they have a thing that they call the, uh, well, some people call it the law of first mention. If you go on an online search or if you have a concordance like a Strong's, um, uh, James Strong uh, spent, I don't know, 20 some odd years categorizing all the words of the Bible and putting them in order. And if you knew a word or two in the Bible, for example, let's say the word seed, and um, and you knew that God said to Abraham he would bless his seed, and you wanted to find that verse. Well, you go to your Strong's, you know that Abraham was in Genesis, you'd look up the word seed and you would go through until you would read all the instances of seed until you got to where it said Abraham and seed and then you would say oh okay that's in Genesis you know whatever 16 or 32 or whatever it is and uh, I'm guessing I, I I don't know where where it is but but I'm just saying um, you could look it up that was a good way to look it up and that's what I did oh 30 years ago before the internet was what it is today well now I don't I've got my Strong's uh, in storage, long-term storage, for the day when we don't have internet anymore. And I cannot uh, give strong enough praise to Thrift Books, T-H-R-I-F-T Books. You can buy used books for almost nothing. And when you buy somebody a few books, they give you a free one. And if it's over a certain amount of money, like generally $15, $20, shipping's free. I can get three or four books for $20. And, I mean, good books. Bibles, uh, commentaries, uh, you know, Haley's Bible Handbook. Uh, for a beginner, it's okay. It's decent, you know. They don't go into the heavy-duty stuff like I would, but you know and then you have uh the bible is history by uh, i think it's werner keller german guy he was an archaeologist uh, when they do a honest evaluation of archaeology they find out that uh it the bible it backs up the bible these are excellent books to have lee strobel s-t-r-o-e-b-e-l I think he wrote Case for Christ, Josh McDowell. Uh, you know, you could look up these names in Thrift Book and get these paperbacks for almost nothing. Uh, really interesting, good stuff. Oh, Strobel was a, uh, he was a newspaper reporter, uh, would do research, and he, he did the Case for Christ, examining not just the Bible, but uh, the Jewish sources that, you know, people that didn't like him and the secular history too, you know, like what, what did Rome say about Christ? 
So when you look at all the facts put together, you know, it's not just the Christians. Um, and then he did a thing what's called apologetics. And it doesn't mean that you're apologizing for being a Christian. No, 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 no. Uh, I think it's apologia. I'm, I, I don't remember. I mean, you know, you're talking stuff I studied 30 years ago. And I'm probably getting senile in my old age, but, you know, what can I tell you? Um, it comes from a Greek word, apologia, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, Doc. Um, but it means to give an answer. And that comes from a um, Bible verse that Paul, Paul said, always be ready to give an answer to those that ask of the hope that is within you. You know, hope, the hope for the resurrection and eternal life and good things to come. Yeah, I think I paraphrased that uh, Bible verse, but, you know, you get the idea. You know, we should be sharing the gospel. Not all of us are evangelists. I mean, everybody's got a, every, every truly born, reborn Christian has a spiritual gift. Mine, I believe, is a teacher. And, uh, and I wonder, you know, we got people, I don't know, if you go to the Baptist, they'll, they deny spiritual gifts, uh, generally, generally as a rule. Now, I've asked the Lord for the gift of healing, but so far the answer is no. You know, Pentecostals make an entire denomination over speaking in tongues, but uh, when they can speak another language that they've never studied or learned before to share the gospel with somebody in another country, uh, I believe them. But, you know, slithering on the floor, jibber-jabbering gibberish that nobody understands, I, I just fail to see how that honors God. But, you know, that's, that's between them and the Lord, you know, so whatever. Um, but um, we're going to take a look at seed. But uh, like I mentioned, the, what they call, some people call the law of first mention, generally sets the case for what that word means. And gives you, you know, when you read it in the context, it gives you an idea of what's going on. So uh, when you look at the word fruit, for example, Sometimes it's talking about something, food that grows on a tree, and then other times it's talking about our works. So, you know, Paul in the New Testament talked about the fruit of the Spirit. Well, the Holy Spirit is not a tree. And, um, yeah, so I hope you get the idea. All right. Wow, I've been jibber-jabbering for almost 15 minutes over and I haven't even started yet so seed what is what does seed mean well let's take a look first mention of seed in the Bible and oh by the way in the book of James chapter 1 uh, the Bible records that if any of you lacks wisdom or understanding or knowledge uh, well I think it's if any of you lack knowledge or wisdom, whatever, um, let him ask of God. So if you want to understand the Bible, get on your hands and knees. Ask the Lord to reveal things to you. You know, it's funny. I, I was a baby believer. Uh, maybe a week or two believing when the Lord called me back into his fold. Because I used to believe in junior high school, but I just you know, watching the uh, TV preachers beg for money, uh, that kind of made me realize, ah, you know, my dad used to say, oh yeah, those uh, religion's all about money. That's all it is. And of course, you know, you get into high school and, you know, sex, drugs, rock and roll. Well, not much sex, but lots of drugs and rock and roll. Uh, yeah. So... I wanted to live that life of sin. You know, Christians were boring, you know. Oh, how I wish I would have 
stayed close to the Lord then. I probably had been some kind of a theologian and known Bible languages. But it is what it is. I'm just, you know, prodigal son. Uh, yeah. Yep, feeding the swine. I'm done with that. So, if you lack understanding, ask the Lord for understanding and read his word. Even better, uh, send me a drive, USB drive, 128 gig, 3.1, please, uh, version 3.1. And uh, I'll send you uh, a large portion of the Bible on audio. And you can stick it in your car uh, if you have a modern car. You can listen to it on, you know, MP3 or MP4, MP3 or whatever it is. Or a wave file. I don't know. And you can listen to the Bible audio on your way to work or grocery store or whatever. Yeah. I mean, I do that almost every day, you know, half an hour in the morning, half an hour on my way back from work. You'd be surprised how much you'll pick up. So with that in mind, let's... Uh, Keep reading. And by the way, um, I think I'm going to have to quit YouTube because uh, the video that they gave me a strike on was years old. Years old. It wasn't even anything new. It was old. So they're going after my old stuff. So if I get one more, I'm out. Uh, they're going to kill my channel. And, you know, I consider this a ministry. I just hope that one day um, some people brainwashed by the modern day 501c3 uh, businesses, state chartered businesses, IRS exempt from taxes, claiming to be churches, you know, with the, it's a business with the name church in it, you know, like First Baptist Church. Um, I pray those people will find my work and uh, find out things like the preacher of rapture is wrong, you know. But, uh, you know, the Antichrist comes before Jesus does. I, I, you know, the Bible plainly teaches this stuff, but the um, I've had preachers say, oh, no, you're wrong. Jesus comes first. He's going to snatch us up into the sky before the... The man, as soon as the man of sins revealed, we're out of here. Huh? Where's that in the Bible? And then they just, you know, oh, well, if you don't understand it, you're not even saved. Uh, and then they teach the Antichrist or God's chosen. Yeah, they are God's chosen, but they're, you know, the flames of hell, not for the kingdom. Yeah. Yeah, their their chosen people are the Antichrist. <laughs> so, uh, can you imagine that? Yeah, yeah, their chosen people are the Antichrist, which means that the Antichrist is their God. So, they might call him Jesus, but no. All right, let's read Genesis chapter 1, verse 11. And by the way, if you've never read the Bible from cover to cover, you're doing yourself an extreme disservice. Uh, I've met people, they claim to be believers, and uh, I ask them to, you know, name five books in the Old Testament, name five books in the New Testament. They can usually name the five books in the New Testament, but the Old Testament, I mean, really, uh, okay, Genesis, uh, Jonah, uh, that's it. Oh, wait. Uh, Exodus. Well, what else? Uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, really, dude. Y you, you, if you can't even name five books in the Old Testament, it's obvious you've never read them. I mean, Genesis is the absolute foundation for the rest of the Bible, and that's why so-called pastors, wolves, and sh sheep's clothing once want you to not read the Old Testament. Oh, we're New Testament Christians. No, you're not. You're New Testament deceivers. So, 
Yeah. But in Genesis 1, verse 11, I'm skipping around here. Now, this is the creation. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb, H-E-R-B, yielding seed, S-E-E-D, and the fruit tree, fruit tree, yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. Hmm. Okay. So, fruit have seeds in them, right? All the ladies know that. Well, if they prepare food in the kitchen, they know. A lot of modern women, uh, they just dial for, you know, dial on their smartphone for takeout or delivery. So, yeah. You know what? If, if I was uh, knowing what I know now and I had kids, girls, I would homeschool them. I would teach them how to cook. Um, yes, I know how to cook. Believe it or not, I know how to cook. Um, my mother was in a horrible accident. Almost died. Matter of fact, got a write-up in the uh, Journal of the American Medical Association because uh, she should have died. But my sister was a nurse at the hospital she was brought to. And they looked up the name and the address and said, oh, my God, this is her, her mother. So um, they uh, called the house and uh, told my sister, hey, uh, we need you to come to work. This is an emergency. My sister's like, I'm off today or tonight or whatever. They didn't want to tell her, you know, mother's almost dying, you know. So she goes there and finds out, you know, mom's in bad shape. And uh, she says, I want this doctor and this doctor to work on her. One was a, um, like a MASH unit. You ever see the show MASH? Uh, Mobile Army Surgical Hospital. One guy came back from Vietnam and he had a lot of surgical experience. And... Uh, I, I credit that in prayers of a very young boy uh, with mother surviving. But, uh, oh gosh, well, where was I going with this? I forget. But, uh, yeah. Uh, I forget. I forget the punchline. I'm sorry. I'm getting old. Well, if I think about it, I'll get back and we'll do it all right genesis 129 and god said behold i have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you it shall be for meat and if you look at the word eat e-a-t and put an m in front of it it means well today modern day uh word meat actually means animal food but back in the times of the king james bible uh meat just meant food in general because here it's talking about fruit being meat but that word has evolved over time all right let's take a look at something else let's go to genesis 3 chapter 15. hmm the most misunderstood verse in the Bible in the modern so-called church world. And I call it church world, but... Uh, oh, well, let's, uh, let's take a look at something here. All right, we're going to read Genesis 3.15, but we're going to go back to Genesis 3 and take a big look at this chapter 
Boy, I'll tell you what, demon nominational churches avoid this like the plague. They want to absolutely uh, avoid this because they don't want you to know what the Bible's really all about. I mean, the Bible is the book of Adam, and Adam is a racial description. Yeah, it is. You want to know what Jesus looked like? Read Revelation chapter 1. It said his head and his hairs were as white as wool, as white as snow. Head and hair. Head and hair. All right, Genesis um, 3.15. And I, the Lord, and I will put enmity. What is enmity? It's a fancy King's English word for hatred. And I, the Lord, will put enmity, hatred, between thee. Now, he's talking to the serpent here. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. So God's going to put hatred between the serpent and the woman, and between thy seed, the serpent seed, and her, the woman's seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now, is this serpent a tree or a plant? Is the woman a tree or a plant? Or is this a figure of speech? Hmm. Good question, Bob. Um, let me see if I can answer that for you. Well, have you ever heard somebody say, um, oh yeah, I did a genetic study on my family tree. Family tree. Uh, are we plants? Are we pear trees? Apple trees? No. We are going to take a look at this. But that's for later in the thing, so... Genesis 4.25. Now, remember, Adam and Eve had lost their son, uh, Abel, when Cain killed him. Genesis 4.25. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son, and called his name Seth. For God said she... For God, said she, hath appointed me another seed, seed, instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. Hmm. In Genesis chapter 7, we're talking about after the flood of Noah. Uh, let's take a look at that in context. Genesis 7, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Of every, of every clean beast, all right, Genesis 7, verse 2. Of every clean beast, uh, remember, there was clean animals and unclean animals as far as food was concerned. Uh, pigs, dogs, uh, shellfish, unclean. And then clean was anything with fins and scales. Uh, you know, fish like, you know, um, I don't know. Uh, goldfish would have been clean. Um uh, let's see, chickens would have been clean, cattle would have been clean. Yeah, you get the idea. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, sevens. So you wanted seven pairs of cattle because, you know, if you only had two of cattle and you had dinner with one of them, uh, well, that's the end of it, right? There's, you know, no more cattle. Uh, I think that's called extinction. So the clean food animals was by sevens. Um, the male and his female, and of beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. Male and female. 
Yeah. Uh, God's word knows that there's uh, two genders. But uh, the other guys, well, they think there's like seven or eight other different weird genders. I don't know. But uh, I just know they're, they're enemies of God. That's all I can tell you. A fowl is also of the air by sevens, the male and the female, to keep seed alive, seed alive upon the face of all the earth. Uh, so sometimes seed talks about, um, well, if you're talking about birds, their seed would be the eggs, I guess, right? For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth, forty days and forty nights, and every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. Boom! There you go. Seed. So, uh, let's see what else we got. All right, after the flood, uh, we go to Genesis chapter 9, verse 1. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Hmm. The world says, uh, don't have children. Your carbon footprint will be too high. Have an abortion. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it funny how the world is always the opposite of what the Bible says? Is that a coincidence or what? Or is that a coincidence? Yeah. Verse 2. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the field and upon every fowl of the air, upon all that moveth upon the earth, and upon all the fishes of the sea. Into your hand are they delivered. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herb have I given you all things. But flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. Um, you know, the idea of drinking blood, uh, is satanic, period. So, yeah. And there's people that do it. Of course, they make it out to be a vampire thing, but, you know, um, there's always a element of truth in myths and legends. Always. I mean, these things just don't come to pass. So, uh, let's see. And surely your blood of your lives will I require at the hand of every beast, will I require it, and at the hand of man. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I skipped. Did I? No. Oh, okay. And at the hand of man. At the hand of every man's brother will I require the life of man. Verse 6. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he him. You want to know why God, uh, Satan hates man so much and wants to lead us into destruction? We're made in the image of God. Every time he looks at us, he sees God, who he tried to overthrow and kill and take his place didn't work out just read Re revelation chapter 12 verse 7 and you be fruitful 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 we're not trees what does it mean to be fruitful well in this aspect uh, we are talking about uh children be ye fruitful and multiply, bring forth abundantly in the earth, and multiply therein. Now remember, seed comes from fruit, right? Sometimes it's a figure of speech. Let's take a look at Deuteronomy 28, verse 4. God says, Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body. Obviously, we're not trees. And the fruit of the ground. Well, that is a plant. And the fruit of thy cattle. What do you mean fruit of the cattle? Well, when your cattle have little baby cattle, well, there you go. And the increase of thy kind, K-I-N-E, 
That's an old English word for cattle. And the flocks of thy sheep. Deuteronomy 28.11 And the Lord shall make thee plenteous and goods in the fruit of thy body and, the, and in the fruit of thy cattle and in the fruit of thy ground in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. Hosea 9.16 Ephraim. Ephraim was one of Joseph's sons who was one of the twelve tribes of Israel. Ephraim is smitten. Their root is dried up. Obviously, Ephraim is not a tree, but, you know, figure of speech. Their root is dried up. They shall bear no fruit. Are we talking about works here? I think so. Yea, though they bring forth, yet will I slay even the beloved fruit of their womb. Fruit of the womb. Children. Sometimes fruit talks about a something you can consume that grows from a tree. Sometimes it's talking about works. Sometimes it's talking about children. So, in John chapter 15 and 16, Jesus said, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, speaking to the uh, apostles, and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, your works, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. John 15, 8. Herein is my Father glorified. Jesus speaking here. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye, the apostles, bear much fruit, good works, so shall ye be my disciples. James 3.18 And the fruit of righteousness, righteousness is not a tree, people, so it's talking about works here. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Proverbs 11.30, I love this verse. The fruit, the works, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. The tree of life. And he that winneth souls is wise. Uh, do you do the work of an evangelist? Do you try to win people to Christ? The Bible says that he that um, converts a soul from death, I'm paraphrasing. He that converts a soul from death shall cover a multitude of sins. So, uh, Galatians 5.22 But the fruit of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, Goodness, faith. Hmm. In Micah, yeah, one of the minor prophets, uh, they're called minor because of the size of the book, not because of the importance of the book. Minor prophets, those are the books just before the New Testament. Micah 7.13. Uh, God is pronouncing judgment upon a wicked land and wicked people. Notwithstanding, the land shall be desolate because of them that dwell therein, for the fruit, the works, for the fruit of their doings. Psalms 127, verse 3. Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord. And the fruit of the womb is his reward. So if you got good children, they are uh, a reward. So Hebrews thirteen fifteen, by him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is the fruit of our lips, the fruit of our lips giving thanks to His name. Hmm. 
Proverbs 131. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. Have you ever heard the expression, they will reap what they sow? You sow in wickedness, you will reap uh, evil from the Lord. Oh, yeah. Some people from the East call it karma, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Roman 6.22 But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, Ye have your fruit unto holiness, and the end, everlasting life. Ooh, yeah. So sometimes fruit was our works, good or bad. Other times fruit could mean children. Sometimes it meant something that you eat that comes from a tree, right? Genesis 3, verse 2, uh, the serpent had deceived, well, was deceiving Eve. Genesis 3, 2, And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Hmm, makes you wonder. Uh, let's see. All right, uh, Rachel was Jacob's wife, and she was barren, no children. Genesis 30, verse 2. And Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel, and he said, Am I in God's stead? Who hath withheld from thee the fruit of thy womb? The fruit of the womb. See, Rachel couldn't get pregnant. So, I mean, she did eventually, but... Because she was, she'd asked uh, Jacob, "Hey, give me, give me children," and he's saying, "What am I? In, you know, am I God? You know, I can do the deed, but um, you know, for it's up to the Lord to, you know, conceive for you to conceive." Um, Proverbs eighteen twenty one, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Remember, Jesus said, uh, confess me before men. And if you deny me before men, I will deny you before the Father and his angels. There's power of life and death in, the, in our tongues. Think about it. Wow. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Hmm. In Luke chapter 1, verse 42, uh, Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist, is talking to Mary, you know, Mary and Jesus. Um, and she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Jesus was the fruit of her womb. Romans 7, 6, 7, 5. Paul writes, For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death and when i was a teenager and running around in high school age uh it was bringing forth much much fruit unto death yeah in the book of hosea chapter 10 and verse 13 the lord through hosea says ye have plowed wickedness uh, what, are you, what are you doing when you plow? You're planting seeds, right? That's what farmers do. You have plowed wickedness. So you've planted wickedness. You have reaped iniquity. Iniquity is uh, another fancy word for evil. 
Ye have eaten the fruit of lies. Obviously, lies are not a tree, so it's works. Ye have eaten the fruit of lies because thou didst trust in the way in the multitude of thy mighty men. Proverbs 13.2 A man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of the transgressor, transgressor shall eat violence. That don't sound too good. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 30, speaking of uh, King David, Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, King David, the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. Hmm. Jeremiah 17.10 I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins. R-E-I-N-S. What are reins? Well, you put a rein on a horse, uh, a bit in its mouth, and the reins are what comes from the bit in the mouth. There's one on the left and there's one on the right. And you can pull on one side or the other, and the horse's head will go in to the left or the right, and then that's the way the horse will travel. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways, according to his ways, and according to the fruit of his doings. Uh, let's see. Jeremiah 21, 14. But I will punish you according to the fruit of your doings, saith the Lord. And I will kindle a fire in the forest thereof, and it shall devour all things round about it. A fire. What is hell? Like a fire, right? Oh, yeah. So fruit can mean your works. It could be something that grows on a tree that you eat. It can be the things that you do or children, right? So depending upon the context, let's go to the book of John chapter 4, verse 34. Jesus saith unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Say ye not, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest? You know, when you plant food uh, seeds in the spring, three to four months later, you're going to get a harvest. Well, you should. If there's adequate sunlight, if there's rain, uh, if the locusts don't eat it all up, or, you know, animals in the garden tearing it down. Yet are there four months, and then cometh harvest? Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. Now, we're not talk he's not talking about being a farmer here. He's using a figure of speech, saying, look at the world. There are unsaved people here that we need to bring to have faith in me, basically. Verse 36. And he that reapeth receiveth wages. If you are helping reap people to bring them to the Lord, you're going to receive a wage, eternal life. And he that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. See, somebody might plant the seed of faith and then you need somebody like a teacher to come along and water that seed so that it'll grow. Baby Christians are of no value other than they grow up to be soldiers. We need soldiers, not babies. Uh, you know, in the war with Satan, a baby is of no value. 
you need soldiers that know how to wield the sword of the spirit. And that's what a teacher does. A teacher takes a baby and turns them into a soldier. Paul even told Timothy that uh, to, to endure hardness as a good soldier. And those of you that have been in the military know that the life of a soldier is not easy and it's lonely. So, and he that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he and the that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. So, yeah, there you go. All right, let's see. Let's go back to fruit. Isaiah 5, 19. I'm sorry, Isaiah 57, 19. I create the fruit of the lips. Peace. Peace to him that is far off and to him that is near, saith the Lord, and I will heal him. Hmm. So, All right, this will be part one of Seed and Fruit. Chaplain Bob signing off. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen.